Love him or hate him, LeBron James has tweeted out his thoughts on the Robert Sarver case, and I applaud LeBron James, and I hope that this is a domino effect, and I hope that more players and more voices will continue to speak out on the Robert Sarver case. I'm going to talk a little bit about that later in the video, but let's read what LeBron James tweeted out at 5.54 p.m. on September 4th, 2022. LeBron James says, and I quote, Read through the Sarver stories a few times now. I got to be honest. Our league definitely got this wrong. Let me repeat that last part, you guys. Our league definitely got this wrong. I don't need to explain why. Y'all read the stories and decide for yourself. I said it before and I'm going to say it again. There is no place in the league for that kind of behavior. I love this league and I deeply respect our leadership. But this ain't right. There's no place for misogyny, sexism, and racism in any workplace. Don't matter if you own the team or play for the team. Let, let me repeat that last part there. Don't matter if you own the team or play for the team. We hold our league up as an example of our values, and this ain't it. Amen, LeBron James. Hallelujah. You are the king of the NBA. A Men, you guys, I truly hope that we continue to get players, NBA players, some of the biggest players in our league, to continue to tweet out and speak out about this. I cannot wait for NBA Media Day, especially for the Phoenix Suns. I Normally, I kind of like back up our players and coaches when the media asks them like certain questions and everything, but I hope that the media brings the fire because it's not even going to be the local media that's going to be there. It's going to be the biggest reporters and ESPN and all that. You know that most of them are probably going to be at Media Day to talk about this Robert Sarver stuff. And I am so excited to see what happens, you guys, because unfortunately, Robert Sarver put us in this situation due to his actions and his behavior. And I hope that they bring the smoke on Media Day. I really do appreciate everybody who watches my videos and listens to my videos. But if you are listening right now, I encourage you guys to watch the video because what you're seeing on the screen right now is more tweets and more posts from the Phoenix Suns community and from the NBA and from our national media members, including our Suns media members who are tweeting out their thoughts on how bad of a decision this was. And oh my gosh, you guys, if you missed that disgrace of a press conference from Commissioner Adam Silver, by the way, who even before this Robert Sarver story broke out and everything, Adam Silver continues to disappoint me for the most part as a commissioner. Uh, Mike Vigil from the Timeline Podcast tweeted out this clip of how bad and how poorly that press conference was. I'll just let you guys listen. It, it was pretty bad, you guys. Uh, if an owner is found by a league investigation to have repeatedly used racist language, demean women, bullied employees, uh, twice used nudity to embarrass employees, and quote, believe the workplace norms did not apply to him, unquote, uh, and ran an organization that had a hostile workplace and was found to be discriminatory towards women, um, and he's allowed to retain ownership of the franchise, where does the NBA draw the line as to who they believe should no longer be allowed to own and run a team? Wait. I think every one of these situations is going to be different. They're going to be fact-based, and as I said, I think you have to look at the totality of circumstances. You're looking at behavior over an 18-year period. I do believe that Mr. Sarver clearly um, has evolved as a person over that 18-year period. I think much of the behavior in question stems from much earlier in his tenure as an NBA owner. And I, I think what your, your litany leaves out are many very positive things he did as well. So instead of me just complaining about how bad that press conference was from Adam Silver, I just want to encourage the voices of the Phoenix Suns community to continue to speak out about this. And by voices in the Suns community, I mean, whether you're a fan or a media member or you have a Suns podcast or whatever the case may be, if you are a voice in the Phoenix Suns community, I encourage you guys, I lift you guys up to speak out about this. We are witnessing Phoenix Suns history here 
in NBA history. We need more players and former players and coaches and staff and former Phoenix Suns staff and everything to continue to speak out, including our NBA you know, media members and the people on ESPN and all that. Normally, I don't really defend ESPN and SportsCenter and all of them, but I think they've done a pretty good job of giving their thoughts and using their voice to speak out against Robert Sarver. <laughs> And look, in the very small chance that anybody from the Phoenix Suns is watching this video, whether you're a player or a player's agent or a family member of a player or somehow you represent the Phoenix Suns, if you are watching this video, and I tweeted this out earlier, and I truly mean this from the bottom of my heart, you guys, I challenge our Phoenix Suns players and staff and the community to continue to speak out. I do not want to hear cliche statement answers when they are asked about this Robert Sarver stuff. I want to hear what the Phoenix Suns players openly and honestly and freely feel about this Robert Sarver stuff. I don't want to hear a cliche answer. I don't want to hear a cliche statement. I want the truth. Speak honestly. I encourage you Phoenix Suns players and staff to continue to speak out about it. That is it, you guys. I am done ranting. I encourage you guys to Hulk smash that like button and do me a huge favor, you guys, and share this video because it really does help support the channel and it really does help support me. And I encourage you guys to subscribe for everything Phoenix Suns. If it has to deal with the Phoenix Suns, I'm going to make a video about it. I'll see you guys next time.